and see how the flowers grow. I'm sure you've seen it just like I have when we're driving down the highway, we look into a field and we see these beautiful flowers that are growing and, and out there in the field. And the Bible said they don't tall, they don't span, but yet they're clothed. And he says that, that Solomon and all of his splendor and all of his glory, they weren't dressed. He wasn't dressed like, like these uh, flowers are these, in the field. He goes on to say that they exist today and then tomorrow they're thrown into a, a furnace. The problem is that we have is that we're not trusting God. We're not trusting God. We're not believing God. And so he says to us, O oh, oh ye of little faith, worry has ill effects on us. Worry will damage our health. Worry will cause our blood pressure to go up. Worry will cause us to have heart conditions. Worry will cause our organs to work in, in overtime and, and, and overdrive. Worry causes us the object of, of our worry to consume our thoughts. So we're at a point where all we're thinking about is the thing that we're worried about. And nothing else can enter our minds because we're just so busy worrying about, about the thing that has consumed us. Worry will disrupt our productivity because it zaps our energy level. And when we don't have energy, uh, we can't do anything. So we keep putting out things that we want to do, things that we need to do. We don't do those things because uh, we worry and our productivity is low. And then worry will even affect the way we treat others because worry will put an edge on us. People will come to us and ask us to question, be just as nice as they possibly can be, and we're snapping at them, and, and we're responding in ways that we shouldn't uh, respond. And, and so we are not treating people the way we should. And worry will reduce our ability to trust God. And herein lies the problem because we have little faith and worry has taken over and worry has replaced our faith. If we trusted God more, we would worry less. But once that door is open for worry, it comes in and it just takes over. And so we find ourselves just being consumed uh, with worrying about things. What I find interesting is that the things that we worry about usually don't even happen. We make them way worse than what they, they really are. They're not as bad as they seem to be. And when we get to the other side of it, we realize, look back on it, we say, wow, it really wasn't that bad. I made more out of this than, than I, I should have. But we create things in our mind, and then we amplify them, and we're consumed by them. You know, we can just hear, hear a, a thought about something, get a thought about something. We can hear something, and that thought is planted in, in our minds and our hearts, and then it blossoms into a big oak tree. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you can hear that they're laying off on your job. When you hear the laying off your job, you be consumed by it. Even though you're a good employee, you're worried about whether you're going to lose your job because maybe your child just went to college, maybe just bought a new house, maybe you just bought a new car, and you're wondering now whether you're going to be able to afford those things. So worry just starts to, to, to take over. And then also it will create health issues, and, and, and we start having these health issues, but yet we're afraid to go to the doctor. We don't want to go to the doctor because we think he's going to give us bad news. And so and then if we do go to the doctor and, and they do blood work, we're worried about the, the outcome of the results because uh, we think something bad is, is going to happen. So we, from the time we give blood and to the time we get results, we're consumed about what's going on with me, how bad is it, and why hasn't the doctor called me? So we find ourselves in a place where we're just totally consumed and, and worried. Uh, about the outcome. Instead of trusting God for the outcome, we think the worst, and, and I say it becomes worry on, on steroids. We can think the worst of a situation, and it controls us. Second Corinthians 10 5 says this it says, casting down imaginations and every uh, high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. He says, casting down imaginations, dis destroying sophisticated arguments. Because what we do is we try to rationalize and reason with, within ourselves. And, and what we should be doing, the Bible says casting down, meaning that we should be destroying not one time, but continuously. Every time a thought comes to our mind, we should try to, we should destroy that thought so that it doesn't consume us. And when we start trying to rationalize why something is happening, we have to make sure that we get rid of, of those thoughts that we're, we're having. And we have to bring all of our thoughts it says bring them to captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we almost have to lasso the thoughts, cap, cap those, uh, captivate those thoughts, and then make sure they line up with Christ. Amen? 
In Romans 8, 2, it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. We are in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit lives within us, and he has given us power. So what's the point of being saved if I'm always going to continue to think and worry about things? Now that I'm in Christ Jesus, I have a, a new life. I left those old things in the past, so the worry that consumed me in the past can't follow me into my new life. So this new life that I have, it's in Christ Jesus, and, 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 and so it has destroyed the, the, the law of sin and death because worry is nothing but sin. And if you're not careful, worry will lead to death. In Philippians 4, 6, it says this, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, in prayer by prayer and supplication, uh, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. It says, be careful, meaning don't be anxious. Stop worrying uh, uh, about things. But it says this, it says, make sure that you're praying about those things. In every situation, in every circumstance, be specific when you pray to God. And when you pray to God, make your request known to him. The thing that's bothering you, make those things known unto God. Rather than worrying, turn your worries into prayer. Every time you start to have a worry, stop and pray. Every single time you start to think about something, start going in a direction that you, you shouldn't go in, start praying about it. And then you'll find out the Bible says this, that the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds. The peace of God, the peace of God, John talks about this in John 14, 27. It says, my peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you. Now as the world give it, give I unto you. He says, the peace that, that I have, he says, it's a different kind of peace. He's saying it's like a last will and, and, and testament. He's saying, I bequeath unto you peace. It's not the peace that's the same peace that's in the world. See, people get peace in the world by smoking cigarettes. People get peace in the world by doing drugs. People get peace in the world through pornography uh, and, and through sex and through alcohol, uh, through prescription drugs. But he says, I got a different kind of peace. It's different. It's a peace that's different from the peace of the world. That's why when trouble comes in your life, you're not worried because you understand who is the author and finisher of your faith. When he says that it shall keep your hearts and mind, that, though, that term, that phrase, shall keep, it's like an elite soldier. In other words, what it's doing is standing God. So when worry starts to come in, it's a soldier and it's saying, it's saying worry, you can't, you can't come here. Only peace resides here. So it won't let worry in. It reminds me of, of uh, uh, you know, when you uh, see soccer players and then there's a, there's a goalie and, and they try to keep the ball in, in, inside that, that, that parameter there and the goalie stand there. And when they try to keep the ball in, the goalie he dives over this way or he dives over that way. He keeps the ball from, from coming in. Well, that's what, when he says, shall keep your hearts and mind, he's saying that what peace does is peace won't let it in. Peace will keep it from, from coming in. It's kind of like Matumbo when he played basketball years ago. And they come in and try to dunk on, dunk on him. And Matumbo would stop him. He waved his finger and said, no, no, no. So that's what peace does. Peace says, no, 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 no. World, you can't come in here. You can't come in here. And that's why we have the peace that passes all understanding. Amen? So stop losing your hair. Stop losing your mind. Uh, uh, stop uh, losing weight and, and, and uh, uh, having health issues. Uh, you should take everything to God in prayer. Make your request known unto him. One thing I saw about my dad when I was growing up, my dad let nothing worry him. Uh, my dad, I don't care how bad things were, my dad went to sleep at night. He got in bed, he didn't wake up, and he was never disturbed by anything. His motto was this, is there anything too hard for God? And he'd always say, whatever he was faced with, whatever our family was faced with, my dad would say this, is there anything too hard for God? And he'd go, he'd go to bed, and he'd never worry about, about anything. In other words, what my dad did was my dad sat down on the inside. He didn't allow himself to become disturbed. And so we need to take steps that will eliminate worry. And they all have to do with trusting God. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says this, he would keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. He says he will keep you in perfect peace, 
peace, whole peace. He will make sure that you have entire peace as long as you're focused on him. So keep your mind on him and not on the situation and you'll have peace. In Psalm 55, 2, it says, 22, it says this, cast your burden on the Lord. Cast means to hurl. It means to throw. It means to release. And he will sustain and he will uphold you. In order for somebody to sustain you, that means that they have to have strength. So we understand that when we cast our worries and our burdens on the Lord, he has the strength to carry them himself so that we don't have to carry them. So we can trust him that he will sustain us. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says this, casting the whole of your care upon him, for he careth for you. Casting, continuously care, uh, casting those cares upon him, those, those worries up, uh, upon him. Now, once you cast them upon him, what you don't do is you don't go back and pick them up. Because when you pick them up, you're starting all over again. So what you want to do is when you cast them, you leave them there. Because you and I are not strong enough to carry these worries ourselves. So make sure that you leave them there. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says this. It says, lay aside uh, the weight that so easily besets us. Lay aside. Lay aside the weight. What's the weight? The weight is worry. Weight is a worry for us. Weight will wear, worry will wear us down. Worry will have us to the point where we're bowed over. Worry will have us to the point where we can't think straight. It says what you want to do is you want to throw those things off. Any extra baggage you want to take and you want to get rid of it. Anything that will entangle us. And what we want to do is we want to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Again, turn your worries into prayers. And then look at Philippians 4.8. It says this. In Philippians 4, it says this, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, says if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says, think on these things. He says if there's anything that's honest, if there's anything that's, that's just, anything that's, that's pure, anything that's holy, anything that's lovely, anything that's of a good report, he said there'll be any virtue in those things. He says and there'll be any praise, anything that's praiseworthy. He says think on those things. See, when, when word starts to come in, here are some things that we can think on. These are things that we can replace worry with. Things that are, are, are good things, things that that we speak over ourselves so that worry is completely eliminated from us. God hasn't, hasn't given us this desire for us to worry because in the very beginning, Adam and Eve had peace. It wasn't until sin came into the world that things were changed. But God wants to give us the same peace that Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden. He wants us to walk and not focus on the circumstances and the situations of this world. But what he wants us to do is we, he wants us to focus on him, the one who can sustain us, the one who can uphold us. We'll go a whole lifetime and we'll look back on things and we'll say, I shouldn't have been worried about this. I want to just encourage you today that going forward, after you hear this message, that you stop worrying and you start thinking about Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made. And now that we're new creatures in him, we don't have to live a worry life. We can live a worry-free life. He has given us a privilege. He has given us this opportunity that we can bring everything to him in prayer. We can cast all of our cares upon him, all of our burdens upon him. We can lay aside those things that weigh us down because he's a good father and he cares for us. If our earthly father cares for us, how much more does our heavenly father care? So we bless the Lord for this word today, and I pray that it minister to your hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So how many of you are going to trust God more and worry less? Because if we trust God more and worry less, no matter what comes our way, we
we can make the, the declaration that I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things in my life, in my home, everywhere I go. I'm expecting great things because I serve a great God who cares for me. Hallelujah. During this time, please like our Facebook page, Good Works Christian Ministries, Inc., and subscribe to our YouTube channel, GWCM Media. If you are looking for ways to give, please visit our website at gwcm.info and click on Donations. Or you can find us on the GiveLify app under Good Works Christian Ministry. The Word of God has gone forth, so as we go through this pandemic season, allow Christ to be seen in you. Thank you and be blessed.